contact with distant lands Indian history speaks of different communities that came to this land from outside the means of transportation were not so advanced at that time they must have faced a lot of difficulties in reaching the foreign shores contact with distant lands India has a long history of contact or interaction with distant lands this contact was established between lands through different ways interaction through trade northern black polished ware was found from several archaeological sites throughout the subcontinent traders may have carried them from the place where they were made to sell them at other places south india was famous for gold and spices especially pepper and precious stones pepper was particularly valued in the roman empire so that it was known as black gold there must have been quite a lot of trade as many roman gold coins have been found in south india interaction through religion the spread of buddhism from india to central asia east asia and southeast asia interaction through migration the migration of the aryans into india and the far reaching impact it had made on indian society and culture contact through conquest the conquest of northwest india by tribes from central asia like the shakas and the kushanas and the tamil conquest of southeast asia the indo greeks the greeks were the first to invade india they were the descendants of the greek generals who ruled over bactria balkh and parthia modern territories of persia herat samarkand and khwarizm with the decline of mauryan empire they conquered some portions of the punjab and sindh and established a kingdom in northwestern india manender who is known as milind in the buddhist scriptures was the most powerful king he ruled over vast empire from afghanistan to mathura and finally embraced buddhism greek influence on india the greek influence on indian culture and society is seen in coins the indian learned from greeks how to use molds and dies to give definite shape to coins with names and titles of the kings art and sculpture the gandhara school a new school of art was the result of the greek influence on indian art astronomy the indian astronomers compared their knowledge with the greek astronomers and enhanced their knowledge of the stars they used this knowledge to predict eclipses medicine the greek or unani system of medicine is now accepted by the indian physicians the shakas the greeks were followed by the shakas who came from central asia they established themselves at takshila and mathura in western and central india and continued to rule till about the 4th century ad the most important ruler of shakas was rudradaman he checked the expansion of satavahanas and ruled over north of narmada valley he also has to his credit the repair work he undertook to improve the sudarshana lake in kathiawar the shakas introduced the satrap system of government under this system the kingdom was divided into provinces each province was under a military governor called mahasatrap the shakas ambition of expanding their kingdom into north india was firmly checked by the kushanas the kushanas kanishka the kushanas originally belonged to a nomadic tribe known as yuchi tribe of china the founder of kushana dynasty in india was kujula kadphises he defeated the greek ruler of afghanistan and occupied the whole northwestern part of india he also defeated the shakas kanishka a great conqueror kanishka was the most famous ruler who extended his territory up to the ganga plain in the south and up to afghanistan and bactria in the north purushapura peshawar became his capital he conquered the territory as far as magadha and even defeated the chinese he issued gold coins on which his own image was inscribed on one side and the images of gods and goddesses on the other side 
he started an era in AD 78 which is known as the Shaka era. Economy The kingdoms of the south were very rich. They had plenty of natural resources and a flourishing trade. Important source of revenue was land. Revenue was used to maintain a large army, ensure good administration and to give grants to poets and scholars. Spices such as pepper, gold, precious stones, pearls and fine muslin and silk cloth were exported to Europe, West Asia, Southeast Asia and China. Roman ships visited the port of Arika Meru to exchange goods. Religion The god of war Murugan was worshipped in South India by most of the people. Shiva was worshipped primarily by the higher caste people. Sea god was also worshipped by those who lived in the coastal areas. Social life Most of the people lived in villages only. Traders lived in cities. Rice Vegetables, fruits, meat, butter, honey, fish, etc. were the main food eaten by the people. Women had great respect in society, having equal status with men. Administration Ultimate power was held by the kings. A council of ministers advised him on matters related to the kingdom. Local bodies took care of administrative issues of villages and districts. The Silk Route Trade brought India into contact with distant lands. The rich, glossy colours of silk made it a highly valued fabric in ancient India. The Silk Route was popular among the traders. Techniques of making silk were first invented in China around 7,000 years ago. The paths they followed came to be known as the Silk Route because silk was the most important commodity traded in along this route for a long time. Starting from China, it ran across Central Asia and stretched up to the Roman Empire. Some kings tried to control large portions of the route. This was because they could benefit from taxes and gifts that were brought by traders travelling along the routes and in return protected them from robbers. The Kushanas were successful in extending their control over the Silk Route about 2,000 years ago, wearing silk became a fashion amongst rulers and rich people in Rome. It was very expensive as it had to be brought all the way from China along dangerous roads through mountains and deserts. People living along the route often demanded payments for allowing traders to pass through. This was profitable for both. Buddhism came to China along this route. Caravans travelling along the Silk Route brought Chinese inventions and discoveries. These discoveries had a powerful influence on cultures across the world. The spread of Buddhism, North India to Central Asia India's contact with other lands increased greatly during this period owing to the spread of Buddhism. The most important centre of Buddhism was Afghanistan. The first step in the spread of Buddhism in Central Asia was due to the missionary activities of Emperor Ashoka. He sent missionaries to many places in Central Asia to popularise Buddhism during the reign of King Kanishka. Also, many Indian missionaries went to Central Asia. He organised a Buddhist council where scholars met and discussed important matters. A new form of Buddhism known as the Mahayana Buddhism now developed. In the old form called Hinayana Buddhism, Buddha was not worshipped. It was the simpler form of Buddhism. In the Mahayana system, idols of the Buddha came to be worshipped. It had many rituals and elaborate ceremonies. The idea of the Bodhisattva developed and the worship of Buddha became very popular and spread throughout Central Asia China and later to Korea and Japan. In Western and Southern India, dozens of caves were made on the order of the kings and queens for monks to live in. These were afterwards located near passes through the Western Ghats. Traders probably halted in these cave monasteries during their travel. The older form of Buddhism is also known 
as Theravada Buddhism, the quest of pilgrims. Along with kings, the different pilgrims played an important part in the spread of Buddhism in different lands. Many Chinese pilgrims came to India. The best known of these are the Chinese Buddhist pilgrims, Fa Hain, who came to the subcontinent about 1600 years ago, and Huan Sang, who came around 1400 years ago. Huan Sang and Fa Hain visited India to learn more about Buddhism and study Buddhist texts. Their accounts give us information about the kind of life that prevailed in Central Asia during the particular period. These are important sources of history. Spread of Bhakti Movement This was also the time when the idea of Bhakti became popular. The concept of Bhakti originates from the Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is a part of the great epic, the Mahabharat. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna asks his devotee Arjuna to surrender in him as only he can set him free from every devil. The term bhakti means devotion or complete unquestioning surrender before the Lord. In bhakti, there is no place for desire, only sacrifice. This was also the time when the worship of certain deities, which later became a central feature of Hinduism, gained importance. Bhakti is generally understood as a person's devotion to his or her chosen deity. Anybody, whether rich or poor, belonging to the high or low castes could follow the path of bhakti. So, the deity could be thought of as a human being, lion, tree or any other form. Once this idea gained acceptance, artists made beautiful images of these deities and kept at special places for worship. The idea of the Bhakti movement later became the central feature of Hinduism. Gandhara School of Art Kanishka was a liberal patron of art. He built a lofty tower about 120 meters high in Peshawar. He also built fine buildings, monasteries, stupas and sculptures at Peshawar and Takshila. He employed Greek and Roman artists to build his buildings. These artists made images of Lord Buddha in large numbers. So, a new school of art developed in the province of Gandhara in the northwest. It came to be known as the Gandhara School of Art. Its chief centers were at Peshawar and Takshila. The Gandhara art is also called Indo Greek or Greco Buddhist because of the Greek style of the art was applied to the Buddhist subjects. Mathura School of Art Besides, another school of art developed at Mathura during the reign of Kanishka. The Mathura School of Art produced fine work of art, especially sculptures. Its important features was that all figures were carved on spotted red sandstone. Several statues of Kushana period have been found at Mathura. But the headless statue of Kanishka is a remarkable one. Thus, the art of this period had both Greek and Roman influences. Science and Literature Kanishka's court was adorned by many learned scholars. The most famous were Ashwaghosha, Nagarjuna and Charaka. Ashwaghosha was a poet, philosopher, musician and dramatist. He wrote Buddha Charitra, a long poem on the life of Buddha in Sanskrit. Besides, he was the author of three Buddhist dramas. One of his dramas, Sariputra Prakarana, refers to the conversion of two important characters of the play to the Buddhist faith. Nagarjuna was a philosopher and scientist. He wrote many books on Mahayana Buddhism. Charaka was an author of the Ayurveda system of medicine. He was the court physician of Kanishka. He wrote Charak Samhita Trade Trade and commerce flourished during this period due to several reasons such as emergence of prosperous towns and development of new crafts. A large number of gold, silver and copper coins were issued by the Kushanas and Indo-Greek rulers. India during this period had excellent trade relationships with West and Central Asia, namely Rome and China 
that was followed through the silk route india through this route exported significant items such as silk ivory pearls textiles and precious stones end of the kushanas kanishka was succeeded by vanishka who died after a short reign vanishka was succeeded by huvishka the empire of huvishka was quite extensive the last great king of kushana dynasty was vasudev 1 after his death the kushana empire began to break up